We have reached the end of session, Senator. What are some of the priorities and some of the things that you're glad to see that have, have gone through this year? One of the priorities was definitely working on real ID. Having Whiteman Air Force Base in my district, currently you could not get on Whiteman Air Force Base with a regular Missouri driver's license. You need a real ID compliant driver's license. So we were able to pass that out of both chambers and send that to the governor this week. It's very important, like I said, not only to get on military bases, but starting in January 2018, you could not board an airplane with a standard Missouri driver's license. What this bill basically does, House Bill 151, is it gives people the choice. They can either choose to have a real ID compliant ID or a standard driver's license. It's a big part of this particular way that this bill was put together, and that is there's the option for people. Yes. I know I had some of my colleagues as well as some of my constituents that had some privacy concerns about having their information put on a database, but the source documents in order to get a real compliant ID could be a birth certificate, social security card, current driver's license. All those are government-issued documents already on a database somewhere else. In terms of your first year here in the Senate, were there issues that either carried over for you from the House or those that you're already looking ahead to next year? Yes. One of them was the Big Government Get Off My Back Act. Proud to say that that passed as an amendment on a different bill on Friday. It basically said no new rules or regulations on our small businesses so they can focus on marketing and selling their product, not on more government paperwork. Other bills included one kind of near and dear to my heart was the Old Drum Bill. Old Drum, everyone's heard the saying, a dog is a man's best friend. And there was a court case in Missouri, actually in Johnson County in Warrensburg, about Old Drum and making that the official state historical dog, as well as Jim the Wonder dog making Jim the Wonder Dog from Marshall, Missouri, Missouri's Wonder Dog. Both of these animals have extraordinary stories, and I know that with as many groups that come down and look for special tax breaks, we're looking at two small rural communities, Warrensburg and Marshall, that are not asking for any taxpayer dollars just to have their dogs recognized as official state historical dog and Missouri's Wonder Dog. This would help out a lot with tourism as well as economic development in these two small rural communities. That I know, not just for you and your years in the House, but your predecessor here in the Senate, that's been something that that you've both worked on for quite some time. Yes, we've both worked on it quite some time. It's very important to my constituents. We've also said two years ago, the Consulate General from Canada came to visit the Capitol. When I told him I was from Warrensburg, he commented, oh, I've been to Warrensburg. Well, I asked him, did you come to Whiteman Air Force Base or did you come to University of Central Missouri for a conference? He said, no, I wanted to learn more about the story of Old Drum. And so there's a lot of people out there that really love animals, that love their dogs and other dogs and are interested in those types of stories. Old Drum has a wonderful history history, as well as Jim the Wonder Dog has a wonderful history and story as well. Jim the Wonder Dog actually came and performed in a joint session for the Missouri State Legislature several years ago. So these two dogs are definitely worthy of this distinction and honor. It does not cost the taxpayers any money, but it would help promote tourism and economic development in those small rural communities.